Gender inequality is a profound injustice. It keeps millions of women around the world in poverty. Women are one half of the world's population. Yet, we are often denied equal access to health, education and political and economic participation. It's first and foremost a rights issue, but gender inequality also significantly damages a country's economic development. What's that got to do with me? I'm just a teacher, not a politician. Teachers have enormous power to promote gender equity by modeling positive behavior in the classroom. Teachers often lose sight of the fact that if they have 40 students working in the classroom, they're working with 40 individuals. And each of those 40 is unique and special, with their own talents and with their own learning needs and with the potential to be successful and happy if permitted and helped to be so. However, instead of seeing diverse individuals, many teachers simply see 20 males and 20 females. And when teachers think of children only in terms of their gender, they start to make all sorts of assumptions about them, about what they like, what they're good at, and even what they should end up doing when they leave school. I can promise you that neither me nor any of my colleagues ever go into a classroom intending to discriminate. So how does it happen? Maybe gender bias can be so deeply rooted within us that we don't even recognize it. She's right, you know. Come with me and let's see some of the ways in which teachers may unintentionally promote gender bias. Listen, teachers often assign tasks along gender lines. I need four strong boys to move the desks. Girls, sweep up the floor when the desks have been moved. Teachers also often ask questions in a way that makes an unnecessary distinction between the sexes. What do the boys think? Hmm? And what do the girls think? Why would you expect all the boys to have one answer and all the girls to have a different answer because of their gender? We are your students. You know us. We are individuals. Research shows that boys generally receive more questions than girls. Who can answer that one? Marco. Teachers often encourage students to believe that certain emotions are unacceptable for one gender. Stop that loud laughter. It's not ladylike. Okay, okay, we get it. We get it. Now, how about giving us some advice to help us change our behavior? Encourage both genders to recognize that their adult lives will probably include work, parenting, and housework. Make sure your expectations are the same for all your students. Both boys and girls can succeed at math, science, language, art, and sport. Actively integrate groups of students by making sure boys and girls sit together in mixed groups. Remember, when you ask a question, boys are more likely to call out or raise their hands to volunteer answers. Girls tend to spend a few seconds thinking quietly to themselves. So after you ask a question, allow three to five seconds before calling on a student to answer. This means both boys and girls will be ready to answer. Being aware of our own gender bias and amending our behavior isn't easy. It needs us to embark on a process of reflection and change. Why not try working through our gender bias checklist? Reflecting on its questions, you'll find it helpful. Never forget how much children learn from your example. By modeling gender equity, teachers can change the future of society into one that is fairer, more fulfilling, and more prosperous. Isn't that what we all want? What do you say, teachers? We can do it! You'll find plenty of lessons on gender in the Aflatun training manual. We hope you enjoy them.